Hey guys, and welcome back to another PyCharm tutorial video. In today's video, we're going to be talking all about debugging and the way that PyCharm can help you debug your code and save you a lot of time and a lot of headache while coding. So the PyCharm debug tool is extremely useful and extremely powerful. When I first found out about it, it kind of blew my mind because it was allowing me to do things that I never would have been able to do in idle and saved me tons of time. So first of all, the debug tool is up here in this top right hand corner. It's right beside the run. It looks like a little bug, which makes sense. So if you click it, um, it's going to bring up your basic console and it's going to run the program just like it would before. The only difference is you get this little debugger tab and this is what I'm going to be showing you how to use today. There's a lot of cool tools in it. You can hover over some of the stuff and kind of play with it uh, for yourself if you don't believe me. So I'm just going to end the program for right now um, because I want to show you how to add breakpoints first before we can really use this debug tool to its full potential. So when you're debugging code, a lot of the time uh, you know like where a loop is or like where a statement is that's giving you some issues. So if you want to check out that statement, you want to look closer into it, um, you might want to add something called a breakpoint. And this is how we're going to be doing things with the debug tools. So you can see I have a little bit of code here. I have one function, two functions. Um, and pretty much all this does is it's just going to get two random numbers and it's going to ask you to tell what the multiplication of those numbers is. If you get it correct, tells you correct. If you get it incorrect, tells you incorrect and so on. So it add a breakpoint in PyCharm, you have this thing called the gutter on the left hand side. And you can see beside the line number, if you click, then you can add a little red dot and to remove it, you just click on it again. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add one at this if statement here. And I kind of just have to show you by example um, how this works. So when I start running the function, just notice it's going to run this main function 10 times. When I run, we're going to go in this while loop. It's going to ask me a question and then it's going to check if this is a digit. So let's just run this in the debug tool and see what happens. Okay, so I'm clicking debug. It asked me to uh, type in a number. So we're not yet at this line because we're still asking for input. So let's type in something. Let's type 56. And now you can see that my console moves to the side and we get into this debug tab. What this breakpoint does is it breaks the execution of the program at this point. So the second we hit this if statement, we're no longer executing, we're stopping and we're having a look at this statement. So you can see on the right hand side, it shows me a bunch of variables and then it shows me these frames here. So let's talk about the variables first. So whenever you have a breakpoint, when you hit that breakpoint, it's going to show you all of the different variables um, and so on within that scope. And the scope right now is this main function. So you can see I have the variable run, I have num, num2 result. Now look at my actual code. It shows me with a little comment beside each variable what those variables are equal to. And this is actually amazing. Um, I don't know how this even works, but it can save you so much time, especially if you're messing around and you accidentally have a variable that's resulting in none or something like that. So you don't have to keep printing them to the screen. It just shows you them right here. So you can see ant equals 56, result six like this, and it shows you the same thing here. Now I wanna show you, we can actually add new things to look at as well. So say we wanna just look at the variables, that's great, and this is gonna save us a lot of time. But what if we wanna check like an expression? So we can actually use this thing called new watch. So I'm gonna click new watch, and in here, I'm simply just going to type an expression. In this case, I want to say if string ans oops, is equal to, and in this case, we're going to say, what is it? Result like that. Okay. And then I'm going to click enter and you can see this gives us a result and it says false. So it says if the string answer is equal to result, um, and then it's just going to give us the answer to that expression pretty much, or whatever that evaluates to. And we can add as many as we want. We could do something like, ans plus h and now you can see i get 56 h and you can do whatever you want here you can make them as long as you want um, and that's why you can look at different expressions without actually having to have them typed out in your code to delete one you can click the little minus key deletes it same thing here and to add new ones again just click new watch now i'm going to talk about these frames in just a second but let's go back to the console for one second so i've asked what is three times two 56 we've looked in our debug we've seen okay all this looks good we want to continue running our program now you can see we're still running we haven't stopped the program we just took a break at this breakpoint so to continue running the program we click this little uh, icon here and it's just a little the, like the play button with a little line through it so resume program so we'll resume program and now we'll resume and we'll rerun everything until we hit the breakpoint again. So we've run main again. We've now printed another thing saying, what is this value? So it's three times two again. So let's just type, I don't know, five. Okay, now we've hit the breakpoint. 
same thing happens. We can go back to the debugger console. We can see that ANS equals five, num, num, result, and so on. Again, if we want to run one more time, we click run. What is three times two? It's just because these aren't changing. Don't worry about that. We do six. Okay. Uh, if we hit the breakpoint, same thing, go back to debug, and we can see all these values like that. Okay. So when we want to stop the program, we can just click stop debug. And there we are. Now you can actually add multiple breakpoints as well. So if you wanted to break, first of all, at result, see what's happening there, and then you want to resume and break at the else, that's perfectly viable and you're allowed to do that. Okay, so let's just add another breakpoint. This time I want to add it at this random.randint. So whenever we call this, um, I believe it's going to break here. Okay, so let's run the program again in debug mode. And there we go. Right away, we've hit this breakpoint. That's because we're calling main. We go num1 equals generate random number. And there we are. So our upper limit in this function is equal to 10. And that's the only variable that we have so far. So if we wanted to see the value of r, well, we would have to break at return r because we haven't actually yet set that variable because we haven't executed. But I want to show you what these do up here. So we have a step over, step in, step into my code, and step out and then step or return to run to cursor. So if you're first looking at these, you might be like, what the heck does this do? Uh, it doesn't really make any sense to me. Well, this is gonna allow you to run line by line through your code and see exactly what's happening without adding a ton of different breakpoints. So if I click step into like this, you can see we actually open up random.py and this is the random module. So import random. And we're, since we're calling a, a method on random and we've just clicked step into, we're gonna step into this method. And by doing that, it needs to open up the function that um, is actually being called. And this is, in this case, it's rand int. Now this can be useful in some cases, but in a lot of times we don't wanna step into um, other codes. So we don't wanna step into like other methods or things that aren't actually a part of our own code. So I'm gonna close this, I'm gonna click resume. And we're just, we reach the breakpoint again because we're calling, what do you call it, num2 generate random num. Now what I'm gonna click is I'm gonna click step into my code. And by stepping into my code, what this does is it simply just goes to the next line. So you can see that um, now instead of stepping into this rand in function, we just step into the next line of my actual code. So I'm gonna click it again, step into my code. And now you can see we return back to result and we can keep stepping through the program. So step into my code. If we wanna step into this while loop, we'll click step into my code. And then now we get ANS, and we're gonna to have to type something in the uh, in the console. Now we can also do step over. And what this does is simply gonna skip the line of code. So we've stepped over, uh, and now we've actually stepped com like completely over all of that code, and now we're back into this main here because we've just stepped over, okay? So you kind of have to play with these and figure out how they work um, because it is kind of confusing, but it's really useful. So let's just add another breakpoint here at the if statement. Let's, uh, we're gonna break this and we're gonna run again. We go to debugger, we've hit this. Uh, oh, it's cause we have a breakpoint up here. So let's just resume. Okay, we just need to type something in the console. So I'm gonna type 70 and now we hit this breakpoint if ans dot is digit. Okay, so now we're gonna go and I click step over and you can see that it steps to this next if statement. I can step inwards, so into this if statement, or it can step over it. So if I step over, we go to correct, keep going, and I can keep stepping, and we go back into this while loop uh, like so. So pretty much, you're gonna have to play with these because they are hard to kind of explain how they all work. Um, but once you get the hang of these, they'll save you a lot of time in debugging your code. Now there's one more thing I wanna show, so I'm gonna just add another breakpoint in, I don't know, return R here, okay? So we're gonna run debug, we're gonna be brought into here, and you can see we have the variable r and upper. Now I wanna show you this thing and it's called evaluate expression. So it looks like a little calculator here. If you click evaluate expression, you're actually able to evaluate any expression with the variables um, that are in the current scope. So the ones that are showing up here. So I do something like r plus seven, you can see I get a result of 17. I could do like string r like that. Um, and it gives me a result of 10. And you can evaluate any expressions you want without actually having to type them in your code. Again, this will save you a lot of time uh, and it's extremely useful if you don't wanna be constantly printing things out and typing them in here. Because in idle, to be able to do this, you would have to print string r and you'd have to print like the type of it. Whereas right here, it gives you the exact value um, and even the type, which is really useful.
So now I told you I was going to talk about frames. So let's do that here. So in these frames, uh, we have multiple. So we have a main frame, which is well, this function main, we have module, which is just anything that's within like the least indentation level. So in our main line here, so this stuff would be in the um, debug frame, and we have generate random, which is a frame for this function. So we can check into multiple frames um, whenever we're kind of looking here. So since we bro broke here before we were able to create any more variables um, and create result, if I step into the main debug frame here, then it only gives me a variable of run because we haven't created num1 yet, we haven't created num2 yet, we haven't created result, so you can only see that one. If I step into generate random, you can see that I have the variable R and the variable upper. And then same thing, if I go back to the main one, we have X in time. So you can step through these frames and look at what's exactly happening in every function, every method, so on. So again, if I want to resume, I'll resume. And now if I go back to the main, you can see that we have num1 is created because we've just stepped through another iteration until we hit this breakpoint. So I'll do so again. And you can see that our program just continues because now that we've called generate random twice, we're never going to hit this breakpoint again. Okay, so I think that's been it kind of for uh, debugging. There is more things that you can do, but this is kind of the basics and this will save you a lot of time if you can figure it out. I recommend practicing um, how this debug thing works and kind of just playing around with it with some of your own code, putting some breakpoints places, seeing how it works, because that's really the only way to understand all of it completely. Anyways, that's been it for this video. If you guys enjoyed, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you again in the next one.